In this video, I'm going to be talking about ozone therapy in conjunction with UVBI, ultraviolet blood irradiation. This is probably one of the strangest things I do in my practice, but the research is there, and while we're doing ozone therapy, we run your blood through this ultraviolet light, and the research proves it, so we're just going to keep doing it, even though it has some, some mystical properties. If you notice, this thing's actually kind of heavy. Uh, it makes a slight humming noise. This is an ultraviolet light inside with LED lights also, and I open it up, but unfortunately the light's going to turn off because of safety reasons, and I don't want to be... Um, ultraviolet lighted and so this is what the machine looks like and the blood passes through these lights here and actually gets irradiated as it's passing through these lights. The, the advantages of we'll get into in a second but I also want to show you how the blood actually passes through it in one of the future sections of the slides. Let's get started. So what is ultraviolet blood irradiation and what are the benefits? So first of all, you've probably heard of light therapy before, whether you like it or not. You've probably most frequently seen bilirubin for babies. They put you in the incubator, they put you in the lights, and the lights are designed to break up the bilirubin for the baby because the baby's liver is not exactly mature enough to handle the bilirubin and bilirubin is toxic at that amount to a baby. Um, so you've seen light therapy, whether you like it or not. We are also energetic beings. I always like to think of Superman. Superman is powered by the sun. We are energetic beings, and so it's not unreasonable to think that our own blood, our own bodies react to light and energy sources. It's well understood that people in the, uh, specifically in the Northwest or anywhere where it's always cloudy and dark, they develop something called seasonal affective disorder. As it's darker outside, as it's colder outside, as people are spending more time indoor, they typically get low mood, I don't want to say depression, but it's called SAD, SAD, seasonal affective disorder. And one of the treatments is high dose light therapy, research proven. One of the other things is for depression and mood disorders, we use light therapy all the time. It's something that people can buy their own lights in their house and use it to treat themselves. And it's a, it's, it's a mild therapy, but it still is beneficial. So um, the other things you've probably seen it used for is hair restoration where people buy the helmets or the hats with the light therapy. It's used in wound healing for like diabetic wounds or, or surgical wounds. It's used in skin rejuvenation and of course, energy boosting in general. I've seen it at um, different... Um, sauna places and things where they offer light therapy. So while we're doing ozone therapy, we're actually running your blood through this light therapy, but it's not only regular light, um, like visible spectrum light, it's also ultraviolet light. And so ultraviolet being beyond the, the, the light spectrum that we can see, the visible light. So ultraviolet light, uh, ultraviolet blood irradiation. I'm going to say UVBI because it's way easier to say than that. So UVBI is ultraviolet blood irradiation. UVBI has been used since the 1900s. And like I mentioned, the ozone world, until pharmaceuticals came around, we were, they were using it for lupus, they were using it for uh, sepsis, they were using it for, for, for trying to treat blood infections, and of course, pharmaceuticals and antibiotics were much better than that, so it kind of fell out of the wayside. There's been over 300 medical studies, uh, I, arguably not a ton, but still, 300 medical studies, including some Harvard studies, to, buy, to give it some, uh, some data and research to prove that it is beneficial. One of the issues with UV light is that it actually has a shallow penetration of blood. So I'm going to show you the cuvette we use that allows the blood to get mixed so that it can see, so the ultraviolet light can actually penetrate deeper and expose more of the blood cells to the ultraviolet light. You may not be able to see this very well from the camera, but the idea is that as the blood is drawn into a bag, the blood is running through this quartz cuvette. And this quartz cuvette has multiple little pieces inside it to actually spin the blood. The problem with ultraviolet light and blood, blood is thick, as you've probably seen it before. Blood is thick, and so it can, the ultraviolet light can't penetrate the whole amount of the blood. It can only go uh, millimeters down. And so the, the, this is millimeters thick, this is a centimeter thick. And so you wouldn't be able to radiate all of the blood with ultraviolet light light and regular light if you didn't have some sort of spiraling or spinning mechanism. So the idea is as the blood passes through this cuvette, which is going through the machine I showed you a second ago, it's actually got multiple places where the blood gets interrupted in this spun. That way it's constantly exposing new blood cells to the ultraviolet light as it's going through. And then as we're infusing the blood back into the patient, it's once again spiraling through it in the ultraviolet light, exposing more and more of the blood to it. When you do high dose ozone, you get four different passes through the ultraviolet light. Neat. One of the things you probably didn't know about ultraviolet blood irradiation or UVBI is that it's already being used and you just don't even know it. It's one of the ways blood is actually cleaned. If you go to a blood donation center and donate your blood, one of the ways they make sure there's no viruses or bacteria in it, even though they, they try to test for as many of them as possible, they still clean the blood anyway. And what they use is they use ultraviolet light because ultraviolet light is a great killer of viruses, bacteria, and particles without really damaging the, the red blood cells, This is, which is why we're using it for our patients. It doesn't 
and damage the red blood cells. The UV light is actually a stressor to the system. Um, moving on from blood donations, it's a, the UVBI is a stressor to the system. Notice I didn't say it's not enough stress to damage the cells necessarily. It's enough stress to stress the cells in order to give that chemical messenger down the line to stimulate more antioxidant healing properties. As we talked about, bacteria and viruses are easily eradicated by UVBI. They actually absorb UV light five times faster than our own cells, breaks them apart, and those pieces, as we explained in ozone, those pieces of the bacteria, fungi, spirochetes, lime, whatever it may be, are actually exposed to the immune system with, with that. It also has an immune modulating benefit. It, it heightens the immune system to kill infections. It has, it, it has a uh, propensity to damage the overactive immune cells and dam by damaging the overactive immune cells, it actually decreases their quantity. So if you have autoimmunity, and so that was one of the first studies of UVBI is actually in a lupus patient, and the, it, it was shown to reduce lupus. And, and how could it do that? Most likely by damaging the overactive immune cells and in that essence, decreasing the bad cells decreases the likelihood of inflammation and swelling or in, in, uh, autoimmune flare. It also stimulates vasodilation. It increases nitric oxide, which is a gas created by the, um, by the blood vessel itself to dilate and open up. So that's what vasodilation means, is the blood vessel is dilated. So nitric oxide helps stimulate the, the dilation of the, blood, of the blood vessel. It decreases the thickness of the blood. The viscosity or thickness of the blood is decreased by ultraviolet blood. It also decreases the platelet aggregation. Now these two are most likely closely linked because uh, platelets are one of the things that kind of thicken the blood, can clot the blood. So by decreasing how well the platelets stick together or, or clog or coagulate, it decreases viscosity, makes blood thinner and allow it to flow better. It's also able to increase oxygen absorption, improves detox efficiency, it increases glutathione production, similar to like we were talking about with ozone therapy. Ozone therapy is able to, to stimulate or stress the system so it makes more glutathione to protect itself. Most likely UVBI has the same uh, therapy. And then also, as you already know about sunlight, sunlight generates vitamin D. So ultraviolet blood irradiation also generates vitamin D. The next thing we're going to talk about is ozone for joints, which I am really excited about because it's such a cheap, easy, effective method for people to possibly avoid joint replacement or heal their bodies quicker. So we're going to go into that next.